All right, here we go. Final nine for the 2023 PDJ Masters World Championships from Flagstaff, Arizona. And then once again, we are at the Little America course. Our leader for every round thus far, Chris Smith at a 29 under par. My name is Steven Waits, I'm joined by Steve Boylan. Steve, you competed in this event, you made the semifinals. What are these players looking at going into the final nine now? So right now we're looking at the, these final four players uh, really trying to put a nail in the coffin, try, trying to win this thing outright. So you get to um, Chris Smith, who's led it the whole way. What an amazing um, tournament he's had. Brian Schweberger, he's been in this league group. Ron Converse is a multi-winner. Multi uh, and then, of course, you have the new guy coming to the group, Yanni. Yanni just really wants to uh, see if he can make some, uh, have lightning in a bottle. Uh, if he can come out really, really hot, uh, maybe he can make this really interesting as well. But uh, these guys all right, are the all, box is live. all capable players. Welcome to the final nine of the 2023 PDJ Masters World Championships. First on the tee from Wichita, Kansas, Chris Smith. Chris Smith up first. Um, 261 foot uphill par three. Uh, a lot of players are throwing either straight at it or hyzer for righties. And uh, it's up on a platform. There are some rocks up there. So if you hit up there, you, you're typically going to stay pretty close. And um, Chris gets a little bit of a skip, but he's well within the circle. Next on the tee from Tarboro, North Carolina, Brian Schweberger. Webby's up. As we watch, as we watch Brian step up to the tee, the players for this final nine. We'll play uh, holes 9, 10, 11, they'll skip 12, and they'll play 13 through 18 to take it on home. You can see the tough uh, dust that comes up as Schwebe Next just comes up just a little bit Blackwell, short, Oklahoma. but he's also well within the circle. Ron Converse, Skipping hole 12 Jr. is no surprise. Hole 12 is one of the easiest holes in the course at 250 feet. Um, it's similar to this one, so it makes sense that they cut that one out. You can, as uh, Ron Ron throws, a little, a little frustrated with that. You can see a, a little Finland. bit of uh, um, emotion from him um, catching the limb as he's heading up that uh, up to the target. Yanni, who uh, he he managed to stay one stroke ahead of Robert Ryan to make it to this final nine. Our only international player that we've had on coverage for this Masters World Championships from Finland. And that is luck, a gentlemen. tough kick way out to the left. Yeah, it's going to be some weird look. Getting it to land up on that target from uh, probably not something you practice too often, being that far away. And uh, he has yeah. no problems getting up and down uh, for that uh, for that par. Knowing Ron, he's still thinking he can make this, and boy, he comes up really close. Chris now carrying a two-stroke lead into this final nine. I mean, it's, he's not running away from it, as we've seen from other majors this year. He's Him and Brian really, really have a chance to battle it out here through these last nine holes. And, and you can see that both these guys are really focused. Um, they're taking their time. They know they've got a uh, grouping or people following and um, they have some fans out there. And I think that's fantastic uh, um, to see that out there, especially at the MP50 level. And um, and they're they're putting, putting on a show. Just this first hole alone, two really nice cuts, two really quality parts and uh, and then these guys will move on to hole number 10. Hole number 10 does play pretty hard. Practice. It's the difference between good and great. Distractions are obstacles. Eliminate them and see how far you can go. Holt's in playing downhill, 426 foot par three. Definitely a tough hole here with the trees and the valleys that you gotta throw through as you're going downhill, navigating a basket, 
it's gonna set off to the right gonna play into Chris's forehand for sure but as we've seen the turnover shot from Ryan has not been an issue so you get up this hole and you, and you look at all the different lanes and say is there a lane going going uh, right to left is there is there a deeper um, a left to right lane and honestly the best opportunity is right down that middle Chris, Chris went first, came up a little bit short on that. Schwebby puts a little bit too much juice, catches the limb, drops him, so he'll have uh, a long, long look at it. Ron's trying to go smooth, right down the middle. We've seen this from him last round. He puts it just outside the circle and very well done beautiful shot Yanni's going with the forehand pretty much a standstill forehand 426 feet that's uh that's a little bit risky but man this is this is working out really beautifully skips up and he is inside the circle and looking at an easy par up an easy birdie opportunity wow what a shot gallery approved throw there by by Yanni Yanni has a strong following of the Finnish player is following along with this card because he's probably going to be the highest uh, highest finishing player from Finland for the tournament here. So they've all come out to support him on this final nine. In all divisions. I mean, he's uh, he's really put a show on for his country and, and for Europe overall. So, great. Ryle with a bid from just outside circle. Circle two putt off the front of the basket. And now Jan, or Chris, I'm sorry. To save his bar. Chris it looks like he's feeling much more comfortable than he did the beginning of the last round. So um, this is a great, great start. Schwebby. Schwebby, same thing. Monstrous drive from Yanni. The standstill forehand off the tee. Navigating down this hole perfectly. Step bigger gallery than normal. Yeah, good, good stop there. Puts it in. He's got his Finnish players up there waving. Some of those people will walk with him. He met some several of the uh, European players. They're very kind and uh, very excited to be in Flagstaff and being part of the World Championships. Heading into hole 11, 570 foot par four with the dog leg to the left, right around this throwing spot right here. This corner is where you want to land a shot. Give yourself a look toward the basket that is sitting uphill from that landing zone. Fairly, fairly open area, uh, fairly open hole. Just got to hit your lines. Any early trees before the corner can really take away your birdie opportunity. Yeah, I need to show us what to do after the monstrous bird on hole 10. Eclipse a little bit the cabbage on the right. And Falls quite a bit short of uh, making the corner, but uh, he still has an opportunity up and down for that, that birdie. We'll see how he does. Chris, so smooth, so fluid, um, throws that hyzer. He's got a pretty comfortable look at this. I talked about this in previous rounds, but uh, Chris Smith and Brian here, they both are two, not the youngest, but two of the youngest competitors in this MP50 division. At uh, turning just 50 this year, they both are looking forward to uh, competing with each other for for many years to come at these world championships. And Steve, you too have an opportunity to be right there with them. So, you know, this is what your competition's looking hey, like for, Let's get for the next few years. <laughs> stronger and stronger every year. I'm, I'm going to be in... I might be doing that 55 here in about a year and a half, so. <laughs> of, course, of course, there's all kinds of great players in, in that division. I know uh, PB and uh, Hank are, are, are fighting it out to, in the finals and uh, in the MP, MP55 division, so. Yeah, speaking of the MP55, both those players taking a 
one stroke separation between each other going into the final nine. Patrick Brown, who had eagled the 18th hole at Thorpe Park in those semifinals. So the 50-55 the division's got a lot of tight action going on this weekend. Good kick. Good kick. Tris from his, from his drive now throwing a second shot with that suspect that he's been pinning on all weekend. From from his drive, um, I'm not surprised to see a little little um, forehand to get him up there real close. Get three people putting fairly close and get Yanni. Um, comes up just a little bit short on his on his birdie bid, but he was quite a little, quite a ways back. Uh, I thought maybe he can pull that one off and get a nice solid putt. Um, uh, unfortunately, he was not able to do that. Settles for the par. Uh, Schwebby has no problem. Man, the confidence right now between Schwebby and uh, Chris, you can really kind of just see it. It's just uh, coming through. Chris is both there. players, both players matching each other shot for shot here through two holes, and and it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a battle the way they're playing right now. Yep, now three holes. In oh, three holes. Yes, sorry. You, yeah, you can see the. That uh, Chris was really uh, thankful that that uh, just didn't pop all the way through. I got caught on the backside of the lower cage and uh, stayed in. Ron's Ross putting for his birdie here. He has no problem. That's his first birdie of this final nine. So as the players jump over hole 12, the, the short par three, they head into this big par four, hole 13 here at Little America. Fairly wide open, not the toughest par four on the course or or in a tournament, but uh, I would you do got to navigate over those hills. I would say this is one of the easiest par fours, um, but it does have some distance, 620 feet. You really want to put one out as close as far out as you can so this really allows players to really throw um, some distance off of this and if they can do that they can really manage their second shot with uh with a short mid-range or even a putter so we watched chris's drive chris went really quick off the tee there i apologize for not catching that landing he he really got down there well in position brian the same and now to ron all three players just lacing some tee shots. You get a little air bounce for Ron. He gets a nice distance. Uh, they're all looking in great position for this. Yanni's up next. He's focusing on this. Clips it. I was just saying. Wow. Same thing as yesterday. Yeah. I, don't know, I wonder if the uh, nerves are getting to him just a little bit or. The wind picking up. Wind picks up. He threw that one a little bit Aaron as well. Um, he can still get up and down for his for his uh, par, but uh, he's going to have to work at this. He's throwing his third shot before we've seen anybody else hit their second now, so needs to stick this close to not lose anything here. Comes around. It's well done. That's, but he still gets there, so he's yep. within a circle, has an opportunity to get up and down for his par. Chris leaves himself a little bit short. Ron puts himself within the circle. Webby, you can see Ryan with a smash of the drive. What a beautiful drive. Um, just plays it up there just short so he's he's well within a circle um and then chris has got a little work here yet so and let's go dude. Oh, just sneaks in on the right side doesn't matter how i got there though great putt by chris for the birdie with uh, ron and brian being 
being ever so closer. Every Definitely not to lose anything. Yep. They all count. Ron Ron hits his second birdie out of out of the last two holes and uh he's he's on the board and trying to make a splash and Like to be four for Riani. Young Yanni for the save. This was pretty open enough to that uh if you hit something early you can recover for your par. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of tree trouble um near the near the targets. Uh so um I'm glad that Yanni was able to get that done. We're at the halfway part now, this whole halfway through this final nine, and Chris still hanging on to a two stroke lead over Brian. That's both players are three down through these first four holes. And uh, hole 14 here, playing playing easy for Chris all weekend at 341 foot, favorable forehand hole for him. This hole was very, very interesting. It played one of the easiest holes in round, uh, round ooh, one for these guys, but in round two it played one of the harder holes uh to par so um i don't i don't know if it was just a wind or or what we're looking at but you can see there's different routes you get the uh four hound route by chris um brian's taking a much straighter approach to it and there's actually a bigger hyzer route available too so you do have options off the tee but you have to commit to it no matter what you do uh looks like uh, ron's going the same route that's uh Schwebby did, and he'll have a look at it. It's going to be a little bit further out than he would want, but uh, it's an opportunity at least. Yeah, the second time through, these players played in round four, as you're saying, just the whole course really played, played a little bit, a little bit tougher for them. The wind is picking up, the heat was out there. We didn't, we didn't see as many scores going eight to seven down as we did earlier in the week. Schwebby missing that putt a little bit high. Um, still was fairly close. I don't, I don't anticipate him having too much of an issue with that. Rod coming up here to uh, try to secure his, his birdie opportunity. He's also a little bit high. It's the flag. Doesn't know how that happens. Chris with the with birdie opportunity, real opportunity to take a um, commanding lead on this and uh, anticipate good things. And I maybe that wind is out there just just messing with these guys just a little bit. Chris is now putting twice in a row because uh, of the air ball miss. Such a great drive too. Almost, almost putting it in for an ace, and that barely sticks in. Yeah, landing off the back of the basket. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's a made putt. Swirling putts here. You can see the flag blowing down pretty hard. So um, that may have caused the confusion on 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 the putt on the last uh, one for Ron. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe the wind is coming to be a factor in this. And we are in a wide open area, so interesting. Yanni and Brian clean up their their pars here, and this is a rare star par for for this lead group in the MP50 division. Um, I don't think I've seen any card that's had that, other than maybe on one of the harder um, holes, like 17 of Thorpe or something like that. Interesting. Hole number 15, 375 feet, par three. Uh, goes left to right uh you got four or five guarding trees right in the middle and then if and then if you, it, the hole filters downhill toward it toward the basket uh to the right and it looks like chris is right on target with his forehand Swebby's up next 
He's lining up. Looks like he's lining up for a big Anheuser. And he takes the Anheuser a little bit early. Misses the trees. And puts it just past the target. What a beautiful catch. Good catch, Cam. Ron's gonna need to. He's gonna need to give that one everything and make it because he's starting to run out of golf here. He's a couple strokes back of uh, Brian and Chris, and doesn't want this to turn into a two-horse race with Yanni. He too is staying out to the left, which is a common miss in this hole, trying to force over turnover. Yanni's Yanni's out well into circle two. He's got to putt over these little small trees here, and oh, that ain't nothing. <laughs> It's in. Fantastic putt. <laughs> Who needs them? Didn't need the chains at all for you. That's awesome. Ron gives it a, a pretty spirited run on that and just comes up a little bit right. Chris got that putting, putting uh, stroke back and uh, he, he nails it. Webby's even closer to Chris. This is a nice little battle. Yeah, so with those two putts from Chris and and Brian there now, they they pretty much have a six-stroke lead over Ron, and they have separated themselves out from the field, heading into these last three holes. But, you know, shout out to Ron. This is two years in a row that he's made the final nine for the MP50 division at the World Championships. He's definitely got the skills that can do it, he, and that's why he keeps on doing it. Uh, so um, I don't anticipate him, uh, him relinquishing the, any kind of uh, things to anybody else. I think he'll, he's going to be in the mix for a long time. Oh, 16 here, one of the shortest par fours on the course, and definitely a, a hole that if you can really throw something that gets out to the right, it's going to give you an eagle opportunity. This hole shapes up good for those. I think it shapes up really well for the backhand, the Gosh. righty backhand turnover shots that can fade back to the left. I think that's the best way to get down there close to the basket. And that's what Brian's trying to do. He just, you know, throws a nose up into this headwind and, and bye bye this. That's going to go way left. He's gonna have that. He still he got so much distance off the tee though that uh, he can still get up and down for that uh, uh, that birdie opportunity. Get off of okay. Uh, Yanni's disc also goes a bit left. Seen Rod throw a really nice looking turnover shot here earlier this week. This one's lower than what he probably wanted and didn't get the uh, flip up. It's it's going to be missing out to the left too. Just not, not quite as far, but. One of the key elements is throwing it down. Cause you're throwing downhill and with that wind, uh, it's keeping it stabilizing the disc as well as the altitude. So yeah, no, and these guys, Whoa. and look at that shot. Thank you. What a shaped shot from Yanni there. Forehand turnover comes right back at the basket at the opportune time to be within probably within 12 15 feet of the basket or less. A rare miss from Schwebby with that uh thumber uh catches a little bit of cabbage up high and uh falls a little bit short. Ron with a nice forehand got a little bit of work, he's gonna be maybe squarely behind one of those trees, but uh. Uh, with, with him being a great putter the way he is, I anticipate him giving a nice run. I haven't seen Chris's second shot yet. Yeah. Now that Brian is up there for par, like, this is an opportunity for him to gain a stroke on uh, on Brian. Yeah, they've been going neck and neck so far. They've tied every single hole. Uh, yeah, they were both four down with uh, three holes to go. And uh, there's Chris. So Chris did throw a second shot. He was so far right that uh, I. We did miss that one. Oh. So he landed at the base of this tree now. And this will be for Birdie. And to gain a stroke on, uh, on Schwebe. I 
just short. So two holes to go. Chris has got a two-stroke lead. The guys are running out of time, so they really want to make a go of this. I mean, now, uh, as Yanni looks like he's going to have his, his second birdie, but uh, uh, Chris and Brian are both at four down. Uh, Ron just went to three down with that uh, with that birdie that he threw. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's becoming a two-horse race because there's only because you're just running out of hole, just running out of time. Yeah, and these two last holes, this one really plays into uh, Chris's hand here. Hole 17, par three. It's you know straight at the straight at the basket, but you want to go left or right of these trees to be able to get to get down there. Chris has uh, played this hole one under for the weekend, so he knows how to throw it. He's had the par putt on round two, and then round four he he parked a forehand there, so he knows how to get there. Yanni's up first. Throws a nice looking forehand. Yep. Gets up there and he's he's got about a twenty five foot putt, maybe less. So it's nice to see as we come as we're coming back now to the uh, finishing two holes and we're getting closer to Wow, Little America and closer to the parking lot. The gallery was really starting to, to thicken up on the right side here. You can see him. A lot of people came out to see this MP50 card. Ron Converse with the big helix in park this. Another great shot from Chris. These guys are really playing well. Now it's now it's on Brian to to not lose any strokes. You, you assume Chris is in for sure for his birdie. Brian plays the big flex, the big helix, and he's going to be a little bit outside of the circle. But we've seen him hit these putt. It's definitely within his range. Uh, Off the front of the cage. A little bit short. Good putt for Yanni, getting in for birdie. That'll, that'll take him to four down for this final nine. Tris now five down through the nine, through the final nine, for the final nine. And, and Ron here as well, be four down through this final nine, so. With one hole to go, um, you know, there's, there's gotta be a combination of good and bad that's gonna happen, uh, be it anybody else to be able to catch Chris. <laughs> Chris Tatar looking confident early. That is now eight straight birdies. Chris has nothing to lose. Tatar from the circle's edge for birdie. The punctuation mark on a dominant week in Emporia. Chris Tatar for the first time since 2004, a European champion at the Worlds. All right, hole 18, 1,093 foot par five, final hole of this 2023 Masters World Championships. The last hole here at the Little America, final nine. Chris with a three stroke lead. He's got a little bit of wiggle room going into it against Brian. He's got a three throw lead on Brian right this moment coming into the final hole. Uh, I anticipate that uh, Chris is going to try playing safe. Brian may go for something here special, um, but um, you have three gaps to hit. You get the first gap off the tee yeah, from left to right. Um, if you can hit that gap and then turn around, and uh, you still have two more gaps after that. So to get a four on this, you pretty much have to play it perfectly and be down the middle all pros. <laughs> Let's get her done. Yep. Yanni's up first with three birdies in a row. He's birdied 15, 16, and 17, uh, proving that he deserves to be here. And hopefully, we'll, uh, you know, he may not win this year. Looks like he's going to, you know, probably end up fourth place here uh, based off of the numbers at this point in time. But man, what a 
What a great player. We anticipate that we'll see him again next year. Yeah, Seattle's been on the chase card all week and long, so making it on the making it into the semifinals on the lead card and then staying up there for the final nine, it's it's gotta be a good a good way to end the week. Uh and to end the, the big trip from all coming all the way from Finland. Ron has one. He has one come out a little bit, so he's a little bit left of where where you want to ha have that landing zone. Uh, so he's got some work to do um, to be able to get up and down for the birdie or even a part. Chris knows he nailed that shot. He knows it. He got the fist pump. Uh, it goes extraordinary long, but past the short pad, which is which is just amazing. Um, he put himself in a really nice position to close this out. Webby's trying to duplicate that. He puts a little bit more power on than he expected, and than he had planned to. Comes up a little bit short of where Chris is. At least he's uh, he's got the, the the good line on it though uh, to be able to make a run. Ron does a really nice job of trying to get it back in the fairway. Um, so you can actually look at the target uh, and uh, push it that way. You can see this second gap, people, these players must hit. And uh, Swebby does a pretty good job. We get a little hung up underneath the, the tree on the right. The tree on the right is definitely better than the one on the left. The one on the left goes all the way down to the ground, but uh, he'll, he'll have some work to do yet. Yanni Come comes on. in. Great to say a shot by Yanni. You get way down to the right side. And he'll have a look there, uh, possibly to get up enough for birdie from that point. Chris, with a just curing that first shot, he says, You know what? I can do that again. Puts himself up in a really, really nice position. He's got about 150, maybe 200 feet to the target. Um, and uh, that's just for the, for the three. Um, Ron still has some work yet to go over these trees. Um, trying to get that kind of dip to get to the target from there was going to be a pretty uh, Herculean effort. Uh, he comes up a little bit short, uh, but uh, it's still in position to get a par. The tree on the right was a little bit easier to deal with than the one on the left, but you, you see Schwebe from the knee still throwing a very, very, very good shot. Um, didn't quite get all the way up there, but he may have a putt, a long look at it for birdie. Got a putt. Yanni has a very solid shot, maybe just outside the circle, and Chris is just like, all right, you know what? Yes, sir. I'm going to close this out by parking um, this final 18 on the on the third shot to secure a birdie. Fantastic. What a show. Ron lays up for his par opportunity. And Swebby. Swebby puts it up there close. He's, he's inside the circle for his par opportunity as well. This is a long look for, for Yanni. We go four birdies in a row. Just come through a little bit short. So good stuff for Chris here as we watch him finish out. That birdie gave him a birdie on every hole in it besides hole one. I'd like to present to you the MPO 50 world champion of the 2023 PDGA Professional Masters World Championships presented by MVP Discs, Chris Smith. Thanks everybody. That was that was a great time, man. 
so I don't know what to say. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Bill Blockner who gave him the award and Steve Johnson. They did an awesome job for the tournament. It was great to see it back in Flagstaff. I had a lot of fun uh, being out there filming the MP50 division. And yeah, Chris Smith with the, with the win. Fourth row victory over Brian Schwedberger. Uh, Ron Carver's dropped back uh, just a little bit with, and Yanni. Yanni uh, shot pretty, pretty well, man. It's impressive to see Yanni way up there and uh, glad to see everybody had a, had a good time. It looked like that great was a fun place to be and uh and man next year got to be part of it thanks again everybody for watching mp50 division at the 2023 pdga masters world championships in beautiful flagstaff arizona big shout out to everybody involved with helping skyheiser productions cover this event and steve thanks again for being with us on commentary it's been my privilege and honor to be a part of this tending and i look forward to seeing everything next year all right see everybody later